I'm Ian Somerville. And in the last of my videos on SCADA, I'm going to be talking on the important topic of SCADA system security. Sys system security is important for SCADA because the critical infrastructure which is run by SCADA systems has to have a very high availability and reliability. It's a 24 hour, seven day a week system. It runs continuously. It's sometimes extremely difficult to shut down parts of the system to change things or to repair them because they need to be continuously available. Think of a PLC that runs a sewage system. That has to run all of the time because we don't know when demands are going to be made on it. Failure of SCADA systems can therefore threaten life directly or can have serious economic consequences because of failures of the infrastructure controlled by these SCADA systems. It's therefore very important that SCADA systems are dependable systems, which means not only that they must be secure, but they must be also be safe and reliable in their operation. Now SCADA systems have actually got a pretty good reputation for reliability and safety. They need specialist safety analysis techniques because of the ladder logic that's used in PLCs, but these seem to have, be, to have worked pretty well. And in general, SCADA systems, because they have come very much from a traditional engineering background, have taken into account the need for redundancy and backup. The spare capacity in the system, which allows them to continue operation even when equipment has failed. The key issue now though is SCADA security and governments all over the world are very concerned about the security of the SCADA systems that are running their critical infrastructures. Here are just a few headlines on the security issues around these SCADA systems. Now, as I said in my last video, SCADA has been around for a long time. First generation SCADA systems were introduced in the 1970s the second generation SCADA systems came in in the 80s and 90s. Um, many of these systems are still in operation, particularly the second generation systems. They relied on two approaches to security, which can be called security by isolation, where the systems are not connected to a public network, and security by obscurity where the systems use specific and unusual protocols and programming languages that are not widely known. Security through isolation is based on the principle that if a system is not connected to the internet, then it cannot be attacked by external attackers. The idea is that there's an air gap between the system and the rest of the world and it isn't possible to cross this air gap. However, that does not mean that the system is secure. It's still vulnerable to internal attack, to attack by insiders who know about the system. And I've made a video on the Maruchi water breach, which was a SCADA system cyber attack made by an insider who caused the uh, release of, of sewage across a wide area of Australia. Security through obscurity is based on the fact that SCADA systems are different. They don't use standard programming languages like Java and C, and they don't use, or they didn't use the normal internet protocols, which are widely known and familiar. Again, these are susceptible to insider attack. An insider obviously knows about the programming languages and the protocols. But it, to be realistic, it's also the case that SCADA systems are sold globally. So people from all around the world actually have access to documentation on these systems. And the documentation is now available on the internet so it can be discovered or sometimes stolen to find out what's going on in these systems. With third generation SCADA systems, there's much more use of standard technologies. Organizational wireless networking, Microsoft Windows, TCP IP protocols, and the use of web browsers 
as, as system interfaces. These third generation systems, which are web connected, are sometimes integrated with an interface to second generation systems. So these second generation SCADA systems are indirectly connected to the internet. Internet SCADA is now becoming the standard. Again, here's a, here's a number of headlines on this topic. Now, the problems that arise from connecting modern SCADA systems to the internet are that these are not separate from and distinct from the older legacy SCADA systems, the second generation systems that may be 20 years old. These systems have been running for a long time, they run successfully, and the organisations using them see no reason to change them. Unfortunately, the older systems were developed without any thought of security. They relied, as I said, on security through isolation and security through obscurity. And neither of these is good enough in a modern internet enabled environment. The notion that the air gap, it can exist with SCADA systems now, is one that is simply imaginary, it's mythical. Uh, the air gap offers no real protection. In practice, we find that SCADA systems are connected to other systems in an organisation. Information is passed from databases to them. They are connected to the maintenance systems provided by the manufacturers so that remote update and repair of the software is possible. The PCs, which are used by the operators as their standard terminal, may themselves be multi-purpose machines that are internet connected. Even when none of these holds, operators still transfer information using USB drives. Another video that I've made on a case study is the Stuxnet case study. And in that case study, the understanding is that these the SCADA systems that were infected by malware got this through infected USB drives. Because SCADA systems by and large were not developed in a security aware environment, what people are finding is that there are lots of security vulnerabilities in these systems. Examples of vulnerabilities are weak passwords, where the users of the system set up passwords that are easy to guess or which can be easily broken through a brute force attack. One example was in Texas, a system was set up that had a, a three letter password. The systems are operate without a firewall, so they can be open to port scanning so that attackers can discover how to connect to the system. They often lack input validation, which means that they don't check that inputs made are of the correct form and of the correct type. So this makes the SCADA systems vulnerable to buffer overflow and to SQL poisoning. The internet traffic from these systems is often unencrypted and so can be intercepted and modified by an attacker. One of the problems or challenges in, in, in designing secure SCADA systems is that these systems are developed normally by domain experts, by engineers from the domains in which these systems are used, such as power engineering, oil and gas engineering, water engineering, and so on. These engineers have learned to program, sometimes in specialist languages like ladder logic, but they've had no background or training in software security techniques. That's only one of the security problems. Another is that it's often not possible to use standard security techniques on SCADA systems. It may well be that running checking systems in conjunction with the SCADA systems affects its performance in such a way that process control is compromised. It may not be possible to install malware detection on some SCADA systems because of the lack of 
processing power in the system or because of the age of the operating system that's used. It's sometimes very difficult to take systems offline because of the 24-7 availability requirements which would allow software security loopholes to be patched and maintained. How do we go about improving SCADA security? Primarily really this is a problem of awareness. We need to have government and industry guidelines and advice on SCADA security implementation and security requirements. We need to have specialists who can advise companies developing SCADA systems on how to make these systems secure. We need to have better security and training for SCADA system developers on the security issues and on security vulnerabilities such as SQL poisoning and buffer overflow. And in my view, I think we need regulation. Uh, regulators are responsible for many of the infrastructure systems that are <coughs> controlled by SCADA systems and the regulators have to take an interest in these control systems. It's not enough for them to say that the systems are safe. They must also actively forbid the installation and deployment of SCADA systems where insufficient security checking has been carried out. If we don't address these problems of SCADA security, we are going to have a major problem caused by a, a SCADA system cyber attack. We're likely to see a loss, a serious loss of infrastructure capability. For example, we might lose power over a large area. We might see something like this picture, which shows a large area of New York without power. In summary, government and industry are very concerned about the vulnerability of SCADA systems to cyber attack. So SCADA security is an increasingly important topic. SCADA systems are now connected to the internet and the default assumption should be that they are connected and therefore vulnerable to external attack. The security through isolation and through security through obscurity are not reliable security engineering techniques. And there are lots of old legacy SCADA systems. These are the ones that are least secure and these are the ones that we need to analyse to discover their security vulnerabilities and wherever possible make these systems more secure. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.